we ain't trying to glorify none of that. It's right. never been something to glorify. I just feel like Top Boy was just, it was shown differently. Seeing yeah. something that I grew up watching, yeah. having an opportunity to go to the audition, not ending up getting to audition, but get to audition again later on. That's, that's God, man. It's like, it's like there's two me's in it. But with music here, that's me, me. That's Kadeem. I actually think about if someone was to ever lay a hand on my little brother. I've been there, I've held him in my arm, yeah. I'm there at the hospital, like. What's something that you've learned now, having been through what you've been through, that you wish you knew before you started doing what you're doing? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a mad question. <laughs> I don't know. So this is the CTV podcast where I talk to interesting people who inspire me day to day, hosted by your girl, C Valentina. Welcome to the first episode. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> so today I'm joined by rapper, actor, you might recognise him from Top Boy, Blue Story, Small Acts or Sex Education, but either way, I'm really excited to talk to him. It is Kadeem Ramsey. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. That's good. I want to just jump straight into it because I feel like something that makes a person is their early beginnings. Mm. And you're someone who just really intrigues. You've done a lot throughout a short time in your career, but you know, you've, you've transitioned into rapping recently and you started out as an actor. I want to talk to you about the early beginnings and where mm. you came from and what makes you you. So first question, how was it growing up in London, firstly? I, I, grew, I grew up in Hackney. Yeah. In Homerton, born and raised in Homerton Hospital. Yeah. It's been a, a roller coaster, you know. Obviously, not a lot of people make it out from where, you know, I'm from. And I mean, at a young age, I just really wanted to find a passion. That's, I felt like that was, was important for me, you know what I'm saying? Being around a lot of stuff, you just want to kind of find something to navigate away from that. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? So I remember just playing out in the area as a kid and they was they were shooting a movie in my area and obviously one of the guys I was working on the set, they asked me if, um, if I wanted to be an extra and then I said, yeah. But that's what kind of gave me that that sense of like, you know what, I think I like this, you know. Like, mm. I, might, I, might, I might pursue this a bit and see where, I don't know where it could go. But even then as well, like music has always been my first passion though. Have you always lived in London your entire life? Yeah, 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 yeah. always, always. And always in East London? Mm-hmm, okay. always. What was it like growing up in East London? In Homerton? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, if you grow up in, if you grow up in Hackney, you can, you can survive anywhere else, innit? Like, yeah. it's, it's just one of them places where like, you just have to turn, you just have to be tunnel visioned, man. Like, yeah. find your thing and be tunnel vision, bro. You said being tunnel vision helped you, helped you navigate through life and growing up in an area which might not have been the most, like, the best, or I guess, would you describe it as dangerous or? Yeah, it de also depends on, I'll say, your friends as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, 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 had, I had a few friends in the past where, like, like I realised, you know what, if I'm around this for too long, I'm going to end up like that. It's kind of distancing yourself and finding your focus, like, just staying positive, like, really, truly, like. Yeah. <laughs> but not every, you need to give yourself credit for that, because not everyone can look at it from such a like, I guess, introspective point of view and be able to say, like, look, they're doing their thing. I don't have to do that. I could go another way. No, that's true. And, and there's, don't get it twisted, like, there's... I feel like it's because of the opportunity I was shown when I was young, innit? Yeah. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of people, a lot of views as well that don't or have never seen more to life than just the ends. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, I know once I saw that, I was like, yeah, no, nah, this is... This is sick, this is lit, like, I want to, I want to, yeah, like, yeah. That, the end is not it, like, you know what I'm saying? Did you grow up in, like, with your mum and your dad, or? Yeah, both parents still, yeah, they're still married till today. Strong couple, oh. you know what I'm saying? I love that. Do you think that plays a part in how you see life? No, definitely. definitely. And maybe relationships? Definitely. Then it, it, I don't know many people who have parents that are married, like, for me, my, my mum and dad's are not married. They they split up when I was really young. Even though my dad's been present, it's never I've never seen like relationships thrive, like adult mm. relationships thrive. So that might have might or might not have played a part in the way. No, you... it, it has in the sense of like obviously like 
both my parents they they really disciplined me very well i could say yeah and 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 i'll say my mom like most most of my like traits and my things come from my mum. Like, i got my mother's heart yeah you know what i'm saying but yeah no both both parents good home at the time i was a single child but i am a child of six child of six yeah six so five other siblings yeah damn all in the same house no, um, at one point it was like four, f no, f four, yeah, four of us in one house at one point. But obviously the rest, the three of those was um, my dad's kids. Yeah. Same, same dad, different mum. Yeah, got But you. we was living together at one point and then that didn't happen no more. And then I was a single Was he child. rebellious as a child? A little bit. Not, not. Not like you know it was it was it was more frustration, innit? Yeah. I'm not gonna say I was rebellious because I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? It was <laughs> yeah. more frustration. It's just that there were certain things I felt like as a kid I wanted to do. I wanted to be heard, and I just felt like it weren't that. And yeah, I'll just take things into my own hands sometimes. You know. How did your parents discipline you? Because I think that's the hardest Whoopings. thing. Oh. Whoopings. <laughs> yeah. Only way, man. Only way. Whoop. No, I'm joking. Still. <laughs> No, I did get, I did get, I did get a, a couple of licks still, but that weren't, yeah. that weren't the, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just need to have that respect yeah. from young. My mum and my dad, they made sure they installed that in me. The foundation, you have that respect for your parents no matter what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if I'm upset or angry at my parents, like, if I know I'm going to get to that point where I feel like I might get, I'll keep my mouth pin. You know what I'm saying? So you grew up with five other siblings, hmm. four in the household at once at one point. And did you ever feel like, were your parents always there or was it a thing where they're working, doing other things? They was there and they was always working. It's a bit yeah. of both, isn't it? It's a bit of both. Obviously, my mum was doing night shifts. She was doing eight, eight to eight in the night. <laughs> and obviously, my dad would do nine to five. Okay, so they kind of swapped around. So. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. my mum would be home in the day, my dad's at work. Yeah. She's getting ready to go work in the night, he's at home. So it's like... He's got. He's looking after me in the night. She's looking after me in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did that influence your perception of like hard work at all? Um, I would say it made me. It made me. It made me want to explore. I was very curious when I was young, innit? Even though I was young, I, I felt like I wanted to do something. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Apart from going to school, like, I didn't see myself just being in a routine of education for the rest of my life yeah you know what i'm saying and that's what yeah. i saw them doing as well like it's like i know where they come from they come from jamaica you know what i'm saying they're from that generation of that traditional you know what i'm saying like they just yeah. know education work and provide and that's it i think it's just it's so it's so important that like everyone has that one lesson i feel like when they was growing up whether it's in school in their childhood, in, in home, do you have any lesson that you've learned that's shaped who you are today? Just remain, just remain, just remain the same. Don't change, regardless, regardless of any situations that that you've been through or that you've seen. That don't don't change yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even only that. It's even driving that's even showed me that too. You know, there's times where you could be driving right, and you know you're emerging out of a road and you want to join the road. Cars could just be flying past, so you like some waste man things. No one's letting you out, you know. Like. Yeah. But just because you now put it on the other foot now. In London, yeah, by the way, because you don't have to be London, that guy to not let the person through because yeah. you didn't get let through back there. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just little things that showed me like I ain't got to change the way I was because of. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just remain the same. So I want to talk about your journey into acting and mm -hmm. you kind of spoken about it a bit earlier so you said that there was a where was he you was chilling in, in the ends yeah in it was just ends, playing out literally and then someone was like do you want to be an extra yeah they were shooting they were shooting a movie called um my brother the devil did you, was he literally playing outside and then it was like yeah, Come we were right just now out, we were just, no we was just outside <laughs> yeah. in the ends like just mucking about me i was always on my pedal bike as well like right so just mucking about in the ends they were shooting by like the cage like yeah and Obviously, we was just curious. We thinking, what's all this? Mm. Yeah, so we gone over there, and even one of the guys that was working on the set, that like, we even knew his brother as well, because his brother was actually an older in the ends anyway. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, what? You don't want to be in it? Like, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Like, and, and we jumped in there, d done some scenes where he was on the staircase, like they, they was mocking some lady. I did did the water fight scene, 
and um, done a scene where I was sat on the stairs, like even just doing those little bits, yeah. like I, w- I just felt like, right, oh, this is sick, like that man sat here, <laughs> the camera's just right there. Action! I'm thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. I love this. I love this. Like, that's why I said, no, nah, yeah. let, let me pursue it a bit. Even me and some actors on the set as well that day as well, like it was, it was a bit like raw. Like this is, this is mad. Like, wait, did Top was Top Boy out then? Top Boy was already Top Boy was already out when um, um, I mean, my brother the Devil came out. No, probably on Channel Four. It weren't, was it? Yeah. Top Boy was out. That came out in two thousand eleven. The first for. 2011. It came out in 11? 2011. Yeah, then it was, then it was. Yeah, Top Boy was out. It was out then. Right, so that's where I met, that's where I met Letitia Wright, because she was, right. she was in Top Boy first, and then she, she, I saw her in that, and I was thinking, bro, this is, this is homegirl from Top Boy. So like, even, yeah. they're having that perspective of like, seeing someone on screen, and now seeing them in my estate. Yeah. And I'm in this project with them as well. Yeah. Even though it's a small extra thing, but it still, it feels mad though. It still feels mad, like, bro. Mm. How? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So. Do you ever get imposter syndrome? What's that again? Is that when you d- have difficulty you f- knowing yourself or some stuff like that? Or? Kind of. Like, when you feel like you're not good enough to be in this space because other people have more experience or you perceive them as bigger. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Straight nah. Nah. You're born to do this, yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I mean, I mean, I've been nervous and yeah. I've, I've had doubts about you know, things before, but not, 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 not that level. Yeah. No. Yeah, you've always just been pretty sure of yourself. Yeah. But not, so, not, not to that extent. That's, not to that extent. That's a bit mad. Yeah. Thing yeah. is, imposter syndrome doesn't, it's not like as, it might not be as intense as that. It might just be a feeling of like, oh, nervousness. Mm. Or feeling like, damn, why, how, how did I get here? Like, why am I here? Am I good enough? So it might not be as deep as that, but... For me, that's my experience with it. It's not like I've had that before in small on a smaller level. I've never been on the set with someone like Letitia Wright, but I remember I interviewed Daniel Kaluuya. Okay, yeah, yeah. And this is like my first, one of my first interviews of Complex. <laughs> Just got thrown into it, into the note jump junket, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> okay. And it's right, he's right there. Literally. Just like shocked. So I, I can imagine anyone feeling like that but I guess if you're sure of yourself and you know that you're meant to be in this space because everything happens for a reason then no I would and there's, then, it's not even it weren't even only just that as well that made me think like raw like there was a few little like raw moments that I've had when I was young and I was thinking no nah, like maybe maybe man should try this you know what I'm saying like even even in my, my block where, where I was living yeah where I was living yeah so, um there was there was this rap group yeah called Big Moves, mm. and I actually remember like seeing them all the time, and I was getting gassed up with them. And there was this one guy who was rolling with them as well, but he was also an actor. He was in Bullet Boy. Yeah. But he always used to come to the block as well, and they would record music and yeah. all of this. When I see them, I was like, oh, what well, can I join? Can I join the group? They asked me to spit a sixteen. I had no bars. I had no bars. <laughs> Just came up short, just silent. They laughed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I had no buzz, I had no buzz. But yeah, no, nah, it's it what it is. It, is it, made yeah. me, it made me deep that, yeah, no, nah, don't, don't, don't ever, ever approach anyone mm. on a joke thing like that again. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson from early. So, Literally. so you're, you're an extra on this, um, on the set of My, My Brother's the Devil, mm. and you just kind of got caught up on it, like last minute you're in the area. So then, how did it get from that to a more professional level where you're actually going for castings? This is the thing now, like, obviously after that, finished school, and then I was in this space of like, rah. Actually, no, I finished school, went um college. I went Tower Hamlets College. Mm-hmm. I only went there for a year. Um, felt like it was a year wasted. Can you mm. believe I did health and social care? Huh? You did health and social care? Can you believe that? I can believe it. I can, yeah, yeah. So why did your hands come up? Because of my wrist is itching. <laughs> <laughs> my wrist is itching. <laughs> no, so this is the thing. Like, I can't believe it though, because I, I have a degree in global health and social medicine. Would you believe that? Okay, so like I, we don't. I don't use it in day to day, but it's just something that you do, in it? If you've always wanted to do acting or sorry, music or something creative, mm. and you've already had your first acting role as an extra, how did you then? Why did you go to college? Like, was it kind of like a moment of defeat? I just need to do something. No, that's what my mum wanted. Yeah. 
I would, if it was for me, I wouldn't have went. Literally, like she even wanted me to go uni. That one was a no. <laughs> I, I, so I, we draw the line at college. That's the compromise, literally, basically. Literally, yeah. I didn't want. I couldn't. I couldn't. Like I'm already. I'm already here doing health and social care. Something that I don't even friggin' like or see myself doing later on. Why am I here? That's out of the love I got for you. I'll do this, but I'm still gonna do what I wanna do. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So you was acting while you was in college. You was trying yeah, to perfect. Yeah, I was still balancing. Yeah. Like, at the time, I was still making like funny videos on the gram. Obviously. These are early days of Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. So. So you was you was doing like what people are doing now on TikTok, but early. Yeah, like I was all on. I'm sure you remember the app called Keek. No. You don't. You don't know Keek. I don't. So. No. That's what I was on as well. Didn't get no traction on there. Went on Vine. Vine was okay. But then, obviously, Instagram brought that video feature. I remember yeah. Instagram was just pictures before, yeah, innit? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, that's when, when they brought it in. I started dropping funny videos there straight. And then, yeah, traction kind of built from there. Remember the old Instagram and you could see everyone's likes? Literally, <laughs> all the likes. You can see, um, what's that, the activity page and you can see the... Yeah. Oh, gosh. What other people are liking. That it's used to catch so draw many people out. It's a drawer. <laughs> So, so with um, you being in college now, you're still trying to pursue acting. How was he perfecting your craft? I would say through my through making funny videos. Right. I would say that would have been it, because yeah. obviously at the time I went, I went, I went. It's not like I was professionally acting. I was in a place of thinking, what do I do next? You know what I'm saying? And obviously, one of my friends' mum, they 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 kind of recommended that. Yeah, why don't you look for a drama school or something? Mm. So. That's when I ended up looking for a drama school. Found Middleweek Newton. Ended up going. They asked my mum, because these times, yeah, oh my days, bruv. Financially, it was mad. So obviously, yeah. I, asked, I asked my mum if she could if she could pattern it for me. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So she did. And I only went for a year as well. Mm. Got an agent from there. And then that's when things kind of... What was drama school like? Was it, you know... How was talk me through I, the training? I thought I, I enjoyed it anyway. Yeah. I enjoyed drama school because I felt like it, it, it showed me another perspective of acting that I, I didn't see it from. Yeah. Like I feel like before <clears throat> the the I had this thought of like yeah, acting, you're just pretending to be this person or you're just acting like that. Or it's mm. a little exaggerated or you know what I'm saying? It's not even that, like it's more about you embodying a character. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like literally being that person, like, and I understood it clearly. Like even being on set and seeing some actors, like I've I've seen an actor who was it again? Lake you know Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah. That man different. I've seen him on and off set, wow. still in character. I remember, I remember he, someone told me he pulled up to the to the set, and he literally came out of the car, and he just was like. Like, he was already in it, like, <laughs> straight. They ain't said action or nothing, like, man just hopped out in character, Ready, straight. Yeah. Like, it's things like that. If you want to be able to take your, your acting your, to another level, like, you, it's, you just got to do certain things, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, to just be in it. I think even the guy that played Joker even done something like that as well. It can really mess with your mental, though. That's, that's another I've thing heard... as well. Um, a couple, a couple actors who've played like the psychopath, or, yeah. and it eventually takes a toll, and then eventually you find yourself needing to go therapy because I think it happened with the guy who plays um, on Netflix the show Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey, oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember the name of the actor, but I don't know who you're talking about. Just imagine yeah. playing a character like that where it's morally effed up. Yeah, because they're trying to be that person. <laughs> you're trying to be like, someone who murders... 24-7. And rapes and do, does all of these horrible things. Like, that, that I just can't... Yeah, because like. there's a lot in... Bruv, yeah. Acting, there is a lot in acting to take in, you know. It's not just getting a piece of paper and just reading off of it. Like, you've you got you to gotta understand the scene that you're in. you gotta, yeah. you got to understand your delivery, the person's delivery, and also deliver that in a natural way without making it seem like you're thinking mm -hmm. of lines. You've got to be able to, like, draw from emotions. You might have to go... You might have to portray something that you've never, ever been through before, which is might even be a mm. bit harder. Do you know what I'm saying? Some people find it hard to cry. Mm. Things like that. Like, it's, there's, there's a lot of things in acting that's... So what was the first moment in when you was in drama school or maybe maybe it wasn't in drama school, maybe it was after 
where you had to channel something that you haven't experienced personally? Um, I would say it would probably be, yeah, crying. Not that I haven't cried before, I just don't really cry. Mm. And when I do, it's more out of anger. Like, I, 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 I cry more out of anger. Would you say you're, like, in touch with your emotions and you just, like, really I'm understand what you're going through? It? I'm a Pisces, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. Are you a Pisces? Yeah. Do you know much about star signs? Is that... Not really, Not but... Really. I'm, I'm just, Aquarius. What just, can you tell me about myself? I don't know. Okay. Wait, what's Aquarius again? <laughs> uh, January. Jan oh. Yeah. After oh, Capricorn. Grandma, yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't, I don't know, but... I don't know what damn just thing know about the star sign. sign. Are you a fish? Why for that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Because I thought Pisces are fish. So can you swim? Sea creature, yeah, man. Can you swim? Yeah. Okay, I can't swim, so. And I've got, I've got, I've got lessons like. in year four, so. <laughs> with, with my teacher, Megan. Big up Megan, wherever Big she up is, Megan. Man. So, okay, so you're channeling crying. So what's going on in your heads where you're trying to cry? Like, was it awkward at first or did it just come natural? You know, it's like me, how I, how I tried to do it was like, you, you got to really connect with the script. Otherwise, it's just going to feel like you're going to have to think of something mad to make you cry. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I've, 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 I've thought of the maddest, of the maddest to, to, to make that rage emotion build in me. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you want to know what I think about? What do you think about? I actually, I actually think about if someone was to ever lay a hand on my little brother. And that's your, young, your youngest little brother? Mini, or? mini, me. Mini me. Has anyone ever tried that? Like, no. where does that come from? That's that's just my that's just my twin. Right. I've I've just I've just been there with him through like obviously picking him up, school dropping him school. I've seen him throughout his whole school years. I've seen him yeah get into fights. I've seen him like all of that. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I've been there. I've held him in my arms. Yeah. I've been at the hospital like as well as my little brother. I feel like he's my son too. Do you know what mm. I'm saying? So it's just like yo. I couldn't imagine the John Wick activities I would do if any. I swear, bro. I yeah. swear, like that's don't don't ever play with my little brother. Right. Don't ever, don't ever. So finding your like trigger point helps you to to cry. Yeah. With your little brother as well, is would you say like he looks up to you? Would, does that add an extra pressure to like move correct in life, or you just do that naturally? I want to say it adds pressure to move correct. Well, I can't. I like, move correct anyway. But yeah. it does it does add that little pressure of like obviously he's seeing what I'm doing and he wants to do something too. I don't want him to feel like it's as easy as big bro just giving it to you, even though I could possibly you know what I'm saying, but yeah. I want him to have that mentality, that go getter mentality. I don't want him to just feel like I can take this off big bro, I can take this off big mm -hmm. bro, you know what I'm saying? I want him to have his own mind and Want, want something for himself. I want him to show me that. Because mm. he knows I'll have him regardless. Yeah. But you've got to show me that. Yeah. I can I can see the emotion in your whole, like, demeanour change when you talk about him. So that's how I know it's real. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I know it's real. So I, I just want to talk about your roles, just more broadly. Mm. And I think I want to... I want to preface this conversation. So obviously, we're going to get into top four. We're going to talk about everything like small acts, sex education, blue, blue story. But I want to preface this whole conversation to talk about black British TV and movies and how important it is to shift the culture forward. Mm. And I think, you know, we obviously have different exports in the UK. We've got music, we've got um, TV shows, series, whatever, movies. But I think the one thing that really bridged the gap was Top Boy. And I'm talking about the gap between America and the UK. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because obviously America's, like, I think we in the UK don't like to admit it, but we do look up to America because they're like... Yeah, their industry's bigger, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, they've been doing it and we grew up on listening, watching the, their shows and experiencing their culture. All credit due to all the artists who's been doing their thing before Top Boy came around, like Giggs, mm. Skepta, um, Boy Better Know, who's probably crossed over their chip. But Top Boy is the one that really got people understanding what black Brits are about and like our, our lingo, how we dress, what it looks like on the ends, like mm -hmm. how we talk, all of these things. And I think, do you agree, would you say that TV and movie really pushes the culture the most or would you say it's a combination of everything? It's a combination of everything. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? It has to, whatever it is, it has to have a value as well. Because people, people don't just take in anything, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying, what's the word I'm looking for? The cultural currency. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If It depends on what it is, people take it in, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I also want to give credit to, it's not just in, in the US where it's British the culture, but also in other parts of Europe. Like, I know people that have grown up in maybe Paris or they, they've been from London, they've moved to Paris when Top Boy's on and people are, the new episode comes out and people are like, have you seen, they're like, in it, what does in it mean? Like, in it, bruv, like, they're talking like, and it's like, even on social media, on you TikTok. Got the, you got the food, you bruv. That's what they you say. Got the you, got, you, got, you got the food, bruv. Like, it gets annoying at times, but it's like, <laughs> that's how, what, that's what they know. The food, bruv. <laughs> bruv. Do you, actually, do you feel like the accents sometimes were a bit, like, over-exaggerated in Top Boy? Um. And the, and the slang? Yeah. And this is, this is one thing that we, we did try to kind of edit mm. as we was filming that. Like, it was probably even worse than that. Okay. Yeah, they would always obviously you won't go through the script and I'm thinking, what? I wouldn't say that. Like, I'll switch that word to that word or something, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Literally, there's been a lot of that in the scripts. So you guys as actors had to kind of step forward and say, look, this, I've yeah, changed if, that. If something didn't, if yeah, if something yeah. didn't come across right or man's thinking, I wouldn't say this, I'm not switching it. Yeah. Literally. Or, or on set or... Like on set, in, in, in the moment, yeah. literally, it will happen, like, and the take could be different again afterwards. I might want to, I don't know, fling in another improv line after that, because mm. you could do that as well. If it makes sense, then do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to do that, because, like, at the end of the day, you're the ones who's going to be acting. It has to feel natural to mm -hmm. you, so, and especially when it's based on an area which you've personally grown up in, have a connection to, it, it has to feel authentic, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So did you did you think that Top Boy was going to be as big as it was when you first? I mean, already it was. Let's just for context because what, people from when might the first not one know. Came out? So yeah, so just for context, Top Boy dropped in two thousand and eleven, and then it stopped for, I think like what was it six years or so, yeah, so and then was like brought back on Netflix um, with Drake's investment and um, direction, and then yeah, came back in two thousand nineteen, and that's when you joined. It took on, on a whole new life in, from, from when Netflix joined like ventures with it and took it on as its own thing. Did you think it was going to be as big as it was? I didn't think it was going to be that big. I feel like it was just going to be a, the talk of the town again. Yeah. But I didn't think it was going to do what it did. I remember as well, like, I'm seeing people in this show that I personally know yeah. from the ends as well. So it's like, raw. I want to be in this show. Mm. I didn't want to be in it because I thought it would have done. I wanted to be in it because I loved the show so much. I just wanted to be in it. It just resonated with me so much. I just wanted to be in it. So before you before you was in it, you was obviously a watcher of it and you was a fan of it. Yeah, heavily. So, who was your favourite character? <laughs> My favourite character at that time, it was Sully still. Still is Sully. Yeah. But obviously I knew, um, I know Driss. And I was reading how, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, but was it through that connection then you met up with, you met the team, you met the cast, and that's how you got on through a connection, or was it like you got actually went to the casting and no, I actually went, went to audition. audition. I actually went to audition, but okay. I have I have spoke to him a few times like oh what could you could you speak to someone right. and da, 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 da. Right. Like, I have tried that a few times, but that's when I realized that yo this industry things don't really work like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? you got to do things the proper way. So mm -hmm. that's why I had to go to drama school. That's why I got an right. agent. That's why she does the jobs and get me auditions so I can go and do the audition and, mm. you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, no, I did I did, I did, did audition for it. But we went for the audition for the, I think, was it the second the second season that they did? And they held the auditions in Hoxton and it got chaotic. I didn't even get to audition that day. They locked off the auditions. They said no one's, no one's auditioning. Like, there was so much youths on the road. People right. throwing eggs, bottles. Police came. Like, it was mad. And then when it came around to this one, the, 20, the 2019 one, obviously I found out about the auditions. My cousin, my cousin even said that she heard that the auditions was going around. I was thinking, swear. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Let me, let me call my agent and ask her. So I've asked her, like, bro, have you heard about Top Boy? Da, 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 da. She said, oh, don't worry, I've already put you forward for it. I was like, oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. Thinking, yeah, 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 it's that time. I never got to audition before, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I got an audition there. <laughs> so what was the audition like? Um, it was, it was, 
it was a little bit, I was a little nervous, I won't lie. Yeah, yeah. I was a little nervous. Honestly, at first, I did it in front of, um, there's, there's Hamwen, he's the, okay. car, he's the casting director, big up Des, man, that's my guy, mm-hmm. every time. And, um, yeah, now nah, he, he, he enjoyed my, um, my, 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 my audition. And the, the take, the take that I actually had to do as well, I don't know if you remember the scene where me and Jamie was in the, in the car and was driving, and he was telling me to set up a meeting between A Road and I was saying fifty keys. Yeah, like that, 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 that was my audition scene. Right, literally. So, let's see, after we did that, ended up getting another recall. Mm. So I have to come back in again. This time I had to do it in front of Des and um, was it was I think it was Ray 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 Nardo Green. He was the director. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they 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 enjoyed it still, and then. After that, I was just waiting to hear. I was just waiting, just waiting. How long was you waiting? I think it was like maybe, maybe a week. Was it? It was, oh. it was, up, it was a couple of days. What? So you got? Till I heard that I got the role. No, it was time. It was a couple of weeks. That's what I was thinking. It was like no, it was like a couple of weeks. I remember, I remember being in my room. My little brother was there as well, innit? it. Yeah. And then I saw my agent call me, and I answered. She was, she was just talking to me and she told me, oh, congratulations, you got the role. My, the way how I bugged down, my little uh. brother was like, what, 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 what? Because he thought I was, yeah. I don't know. He was like, what, what, what? I told him I got the role. He was like, what, I swear? <laughs> yeah, guest, guest. Yeah, that must have been exciting. Like, obviously seeing something that you've grown up watching. Literally, like, seeing something that I grew up watching. Yeah. Wanting to be in it. Having an opportunity to go to the audition. Not ending up getting to audition, but get to audition again later on. That's, that's God, bro. Yeah. No one can take that from you. Like, that's yours. That's your role. Like, no, literally. With, with the role that you played, so you played Kit, for those who don't know. I feel like if you don't know, then where have you been? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you played Kit. Was that already a role set before you came into the audition and they was looking for someone to fill the part or did you come in and they decide, designed the role oh, no, around Kit, you? Kit was already there still. Okay. Kit was actually based off a real person. I actually was I actually met him and um, went to go to some food and was talking a bit. Yeah. Just to kind of get a little understanding of him. My character was based on him. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to Top Boy in a little a little while, but I just want to talk about like Black British TV in general, and just one one criticism I would say people might have is like with shows like Top Boy, Blue Story, as valid and as important they are, and as, as the massive things that they've done for UK culture, or people often say there's not enough variation. It's always the same thing. It's always a, a crime drama. Da, 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 da. Do you think there's enough variation in Black British TV and movies. Mm. There could be more. Mm. There could be more, but I do I do understand what people mean by that though. Like it is a bit cliche. It's just that it's just that I just feel like Top Boy was just it was shown differently, very differently, like to how anyone else would do. It. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. And then the actors involved in it as well, and it all plays a part to make it what it was, isn't it? And to give it credit. It was covering topics that aren't just around. It's like, not just gang, ends. yeah. There there's was... gentrification. There's the, the immigra- immigration. There's mm-hmm. that. There's a lot in there. Not just just, just the gang, gang, gang. Mm-hmm. We ain't trying to glorify none of that. It's right. never been something to glorify. Right. Exactly. Speaking about how we lived. <laughs> <laughs> you was also in sex education. Mm-hmm. This I've been really excited to talk about this because it's just something completely different. Like talk about variation. <laughs> so for those who don't know, Sex Education is a Netflix series centered around a British teenager called Otis and his sex therapist mother. And it amassed over 40 million views on the first series after its debut. So that's it was massive, sex education. Like I've I've personally watched it and it's one of my favourite Netflix shows, to be honest. And and you played Octoman. I was watching your show reel just to like memorise of like the part you played and <laughs> So it's completely different from Kit and Top Boy. Completely, like, completely different completely. from a kid who grew up in Hom- Homerton. I don't know where Octo Boy grew up, but it wasn't it might have been Homerton, to be honest. You know what's, you know what's <laughs> what I actually remember I actually remember that the audition for that one and I remember when they called me afterwards and told me I got it, and I wasn't gonna do it. He, he if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have done it. 
I'm being real and because we well, you know manager. what manager. Yeah, manager, yeah. manager for manage. Mm. I wouldn't have done mm. it if it weren't for him still, because I'll be real, yeah. They wanted me to do full frontal nudity. I was thinking, are you me? Are you, on are, Netflix? You, are you mad? On Netflix. You want me to have my, my <laughs> cheeks on Netflix, bruv? Are you mad? I made myself, man. So they said, nah. Okay, okay, okay. How about how about how about this? How about you wear you wear you wear boxes and, 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 and topless? Like, no, but you're still gonna see my nipples though. I don't wanna do Whoa, I don't wanna Tossel's toss was like, shut up and do it, man. What are you talking? Shut up, man. <laughs> when I told him how much they was paying, shut up and do it, man. Shut up and do it, man. Money I can make. Shut up and do it, man. <laughs> yeah. So I just said, alright, cool, well, I'll do it, man. I hear it. And I'm next minute, I'm, I'm topless, wearing some shiny shorts and in some sapphire sort of weird shit. <laughs> But you know what? Like that showed that you could do different things. You know what I mean? It's not every day like the same. That was weird. That was very weird. That was that was even my first first ever free and sex scene. Mm. I've never done a. St- this is what I'm saying. Like sex ed was my. I'll kind of say it's my first and second speaking role because I got it around the same time as Top Boy. Yeah. I got them. I was doing them both. I was even like doing Top Boy, and then the following week I was in Cardiff. And yeah. I came back for top, but like literally, I was doing it around the same time. But that was my first. I felt like I was thrown in the deep end <laughs> about a sex scene. Me. First ever sex scene. Wow. And for it to be something that's not the traditional sex scene. Isn't it? Yeah. How did you get into that role then? I just knew I had to kind of just be a little bit weird. Because the whole thing is just weird anyway. What do you mean? My name is Octoboy and that and then and then she likes octopuses and sci-fi stuff and You just had to It was beyond me but I still had to do it. You Did know you do any research into this? Like No, you know, no, I didn't, just, I didn't even do no research. It was more just just kind of just going in there and just having fun. Like, yeah. I just said, you know what, it's the first time being something like this. I just just go in there, bro. I think that's the beauty with acting is you can do something that's completely that you wouldn't do in real life. Mm-hmm. Like it just gives you the opportunity to just let go. Your career, you've been in like four four notable things which I can remember off the top of my head, and for me they all show like a different side to Black British culture. So you've got sex ads, which is more like showing the intersection between like sexuality, race. And just showing black black Brits in a, in a way that's not really shown on on TV as as commonly. Then you've got the Top Boy in a Blue Story, which is a narrative that has been shown quite frequently, but done mm. in a more ele- elevated way. Then you've got Small Acts. So for those who don't know, Small Acts is an anthology series written by Steve McQueen, set in London from the 60s to the 80s, and it follows like West West Indian immigrants around that time and touches on topics that's really crucial in black British history, like Mangrove Restaurant and Lover's Rock era, mm. and you play Samson. I loved Small Axe, seriously. Like, yeah, no, filming that was fun, man. Yeah, very, it looked like it. Very, very fun, man. And I, that, that was like a sense of home for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because obviously growing up in a Caribbean household, that's all you're hearing is reggae and yard vibes and food, cook, sweet food I cook up and, you know what I'm saying, like, all of that. I just felt at home. Small Acts, for me, is probably, like, one of the most important series we've had because it documents an era, era that not many people know about. Mm. Like, the Lovers Rock era, I can guarantee you, Gen Z's probably don't even know what that is. <laughs> no, what? They don't know. No. <laughs> they wouldn't know Essential C, bro. They don't, they don't know. They don't know about no lovers. Right? Yeah, like we don't know much about the music scene in the UK pre grime, really pre garage. So mm. that was that was interesting. That was really interesting to watch. How did you go about researching for that role? I just kind of looked at my dad. My dad's my dad's always been that kind of yard man. You know what I'm saying? That vibe yard man playing old school music vibes in. Also, he did mess around with a little DJing as well back in the day. So it's just like, yeah, I can look, I can look at him and see how he would have kind of done this. Do you know what I'm saying? If anything, I was my dad. Mm, <laughs> I was you my, playing your dad in anything, a way. If anything, I was my dad in yeah. Small Axe. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Did you have any conversations with him, or was more like? You no, just... you know, it was it was more just like I just know him. I just know him. So, so the role of Samson. How would you describe him? Who is Samson? Samson is just a. I think Samson is a is a yard man. He was just trying. He's just trying to get by. He's happy in life, regardless of of the situations that he could be going through. And he just really gives thanks for life and, and good people around him. Yeah, no, that was that was massive. And obviously, you were also working with your Top Boy co-stars, co-star Michael Ward on that. And that, I'm, I'm guessing the synergy between you two is just natural. And this is what I'm saying. Like, it's so funny. I'm like, you know, that's my brother, man. Like, <laughs> from Top Boy, then Blue Story, then Small Wax. And we just did Book of Clarence as well. That's four projects we've both been on together. I remember, I remember when we when I walked into the room and he was in the room by himself, just there waiting. He was charging his phone. I see Ashley in the next room over here and the casting director. And I literally went over there to go to go say, "Well, I'm going to him. Like, well, I'm going. You good? My name's Michael. Still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just hella straight face. <laughs> so I want I want to talk about Top Boy in more depth now. How did it change your life? Hmm. I mean, it's 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 it definitely it definitely brings opportunities, no doubt. And I just felt like it's 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 also come with a few perks, <laughs> a few perks, just a few perks, you know. Just, just a few. Yeah. Because like, obviously. It, you you got casted into it. How long was you recording for actually before it actually aired? Um, if I'm if I'm correct, the first season was like eight nine months. Mm -hmm. So from the time it dropped, the first the first season of net the net first Netflix season, to the time when you felt like okay, I'm starting to see a difference in my life now. People start to know who I am. They might recognize me on the street. Like, what's the difference? That time span. How quickly did it happen, basically? It was kind of happening already a bit, though. Mm. It was kind of happening a bit, because obviously, like, from when my, as I said, my videos, like, I, I did build a bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I had the few videos that was going viral, so people kind of did know my face already. Yeah, So yeah. I was getting it a bit, but I won't lie, Top Boy amplified it. Yeah, so it was like a gradual build, and then it was like... Literally, boom. Like, like yeah, I yeah. could still go places, people still... So oh, Versace breast milk, what going? Because that that was my my Instagram name. You Versace. get Versace breast milk. Okay, wait, yeah. why? <laughs> I like designer breast milk. Okay, breast milk. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I just <laughs> make sure. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you like designer breast milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, premium milk, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> 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 Swear. Okay, okay. So <laughs> people were like on the street, Versace breast milk. I like that though. Oh, I like why the Versace and not like Dolce. No, it was it was Gucci. actually just a random. It, it, it couldn't have even been Ferragamo. It, it was it, it was close. It was close. So to nothing being to do with like the Migos song. No, 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 no. It was, it was legit me just thinking. <laughs> I wonder if I just was Gucci breast milk and Adidas breast milk and like legit. Mm. But I just ended up just using Versace breast milk. I just like the sound it had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versace breast. I don't know. I just used it. <laughs> so people were still calling you that up Literally. until up until, up until today. Like they, today, some people yeah. still see me and be like, "Yo, was, you said Versace breast when you could." <laughs> yeah, what go on, my bro? Yeah, yeah. Come on, narrate your thing. So, so how? Because obviously, there's one thing being known in your area. There's mm. another thing being known on social media and the wider public in the world. Like, how is it dealing with that? And just more people knowing who you are. Fame, basically, um, is what I'm describing. <laughs> it could be, it could be a bit, it could be a bit draining. Yeah. People's changed since things changed. I've not. I've people have changed since, since things changed. Since things changed, mm. yeah. I've, I've noticed a bit. I've noticed a bit. Just now, like recently, or. Mm -mm. Since since Top Boy, I've all seen people unfollow me when Top Boy come out. That 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 I was thinking, so yeah. I, I didn't do you that though, did I? <laughs> Why are you not following me? Yeah. I, I, I don't know, that deep. I don't follow you too, I guess. I and have you seen those same people in person? Yeah. It's, it's just, just... We said, my bro, you could. But, hey, the game. 
Go, you go, let us go. It's pee. You just go pee. You know what? Like, it's not even that deep for someone to unfollow (laughs) in the grand scheme of things. Like, there's actual real life problems happening in the world, but in that moment, it's like, damn. How do you deal with that? Like, people changing up on you. I play the game, innit? Yeah. I play the game at the end of the day. I know who's my people. I know who's around me. I know who I'm with every day. They ain't gonna change. Everyone else is associates, innit? Is that important for you to keep the same circle around you yeah, from, of from beginning? Of and that's, I guess, how you them stay grounded. They've been with me from, from early. Yeah. And they ain't got nowhere either. <laughs> Do you yeah, get yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really get that. But then at the same time, you might have lost friends, but you've gained new ones through Top Boy or. Maybe I don't know yeah, about no, of friends course, is a strong course, word. Of course. You, I know what you mean though as well. Like you could you, you could you could have a friend for twenty years and the person you met six months ago is even realer than that person you know. Mm. Like things like that has happened, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's possible. But no, nah, not in my case. I, I I I actually know how to read people. I I, I get vibes. I read energy. I can tell yeah. if someone's genuine or not. Mm. And it's only genuine people that I, I keep around me. Too. Are you are you quite a private person? Very, very. Like, have you seen Have you seen a Wikipedia? I haven't. No, mm. no. Yeah, not much. I haven't seen many interviews either. Yeah, you don't really like to talk. Yeah, give I already, too much. I already like talking. Here we are talking. <laughs> I just didn't mind doing this yeah. anyway. I didn't mind, but I just, I just yeah, don't really yeah. like talking. Still, in I general, no. Nah. I think the most thing that I've seen from you. Is when you posted a picture of you and Jasmine, Jasmine Jobson, what, was your in, co-star. Um, I think it was in Paris. Yeah, and then that for me was like when the first time people were actually like people really dumb, getting though, into man. your people personal life. Yeah, because this is the thing. Like, it's not even like say, if you go on Google, you would have seen the pictures of us together. You, yeah, you, you would. Like, it weren't no secret. Like, you could see, like we're holding hands here, like. I'm holding a waist there. Like you just didn't actually say it. Yeah, but it's say like, it's, if you know, you know. If, yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, yeah. Social media, isn't it? That's like hard because for me, like I'm in a relationship with someone in the industry and I'm always thinking like, do I, do, well, how much do I share? Like, is that a question that you have to ask yourself? Like, yeah. You might be out. Yeah, 100%. Cause you yeah. Need to, like one thing I know is like, every little privacy I have, it's mine, right? Yeah. But the moment it's out there, it's not mine anymore. Any private private thing I have, I just want to hold on to it. Like, I just want to hold on to it because eventually, eventually it's going to get out of there and it's not my normal. Did you feel any anxiety about dating someone who you're on set with? Or? Nah. Because, bro, this is the thing, like, it's, we both are basically come from, like, the same, do you know what I'm saying? We both were nobody, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not like, I, I didn't feel like I'm in a relationship with an industry person. Right. Do you know just what I'm saying? Just a person. Yeah, it's just a person, literally. Yeah. Have you had many relationships in your life? Or? No, she's my first. First ever girlfriend, like yeah. proper. That's the thing. I've never been one to do the whole... Relationship? Girl. Nah, 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 yeah. nah. I was in the streets. Oh. And I never I never had a girlfriend. Had girlfriends. I ain't had a girlfriend. How was it working with your co-stars? Like, because obviously there's acting and there's the interactions we see on screen. But what about behind the scenes? Like... How was it when the cameras went rolling? It's, it's funny, it's bants. Do you know what I'm <laughs> saying? At the end of the day, even though we know we're there for work and we got to make this amazing project, yeah, it's still it's still bannery after all like, that, in between. You know what I'm saying? Cuts and that, that's like, still, yeah. Yeah, I definitely get that vibe. Yeah, because we're, think... we're all, we're all like, top boy, everyone, like, we're family, man. Like, that's a, it's a one big, amazing family I'm happy to be part of. And I think from a viewer's point of view, we see that. Mm. so it makes even though you're acting you know you're playing a part that's not you but we still feel like there's a synergy between you all just even even the little behind the scenes clips like there was one one um video of you guys dancing to pop smoke oh, and you just all having fun and vibing oh no i think i know it's i think yeah, it was yeah. on the trailer i think mm-hmm. i think it, i think it was on the, on the bus the makeup bus yeah i think it was yeah. the makeup bus yeah i think it was a makeup bus and it just looks like fun just another day do you know what I mean? yeah man it's it, every day it was, it was always vibes yeah always yeah. vibes like literally how did you and like your co-stars like your relationship blossom offset like did you ever go out outside of top boy yeah, or was of it course. just 
Amazing. Of course, we was getting motives together. We would chill at each other's houses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, it was, like, we're cool. Like, fam like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Literally. So I want to talk more about the Top Boy spin-off. So in an interview... <laughs> Ronan Bennett. Ronan, the, Ronan Big Ronan Mons. Bennett, Ronan Big Ronan Boy. Big <laughs> he said that there's going to, well, he's hoping, not going to, <coughs> they're in talks of there being a Top Boy spin off focusing on Jack. For mm. me, that makes sense because as much as it's called Top Boy, as much as the focus is on, you know, the Top Boy, Sully and um, Duchesne, Duchesne, I think, <laughs> I had to say it like that. I think for me, the start is Jack because she's really, she's like, She's there all the way through. The camera might not always be on her, or the focus might not always be on her, but mm. she's carrying it through. And she's that other storyline where you want to know, like, how did she get there? How did her family get there? I want to know how, how Lauren ended up on drugs. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because we'll talk about that in a second, because that transition was mad. I know, there's a lot. There's, a lot, <laughs> there's to... a lot to unpack. So was there ever any talk about a spin-off during um, recording? I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm actually not sure. But I did feel that, to be honest. I did feel they they, they, they want to do a... Sp- I feel they want to do one. I feel, anyway. It's just the way things are going, anyway. Like, yeah. You've got to remember, like, you've got power as well. Like, and exactly. If he's done, the, the, done Force with Tommy, then he's done the Power yeah, Book yeah, with yeah. Tariq, then he's done the Raising Canaan, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I feel like the UK does need something like that. We ain't got... We ain't, we ain't got that, like... A, 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 a dominant proper movie that yeah. and then there's spin-offs from no we don't have that we need something like that though as well I want to talk about the last the last series for me that felt really rushed like just if I'm honest I was watching it it was six episodes I was hoping that they was going to drop it at least like episode by episode so that it can or at least three in two parts three episodes that's, that's two. what I was thinking as but well. it was very much like okay here have it <laughs> and then 101 storylines in a very short space of time but for you filming it and being behind the scenes was it did it feel like that was it how it looked you know what I, I was I wasn't even you know there was sometimes I would pull up on set of the the last season like I would mm-hmm. pull up on set sometimes because obviously I would go check jazz or if I was just pulling up car I knew some of the men was filming that day anyway I would link them because it was in the ends as well they're filming local so a man can just pull up that's the only time, but no, other than that, no. Because I think for me, it was Lauren's storyline. That's the most thing that sticks in my head. Mm. How suddenly she goes from being... I mean, it makes sense in, in, the, in, the, in real life. Like, I know people who've been through things and then suddenly that, that moment know, where they, you go they, off the rails... But we haven't, but we haven't seen the, the real the, build up. Right. I know, there, and there's, the process. There's, 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 there's a lot there's a lot in there as well like, there's so much even things I can even point out and I'm thinking why the freak did you not make that like down to down to down to Steph yeah when he when he finally pulled up to Sully and he had the gun in his face but then he said to him man you ain't worth it I hear it I hear it you know what I'm saying I hear it I hear that but Bruv, I need to really remember the pain mm. and suffering this person put this little youth through. Killed his brother right in front of him. Now he's living in care. He's quiet. He's, he, his whole character has changed. He's more quiet now. Yeah. And those are the dangerous ones, the quiet and dangerous ones, you know what I'm saying? But you're telling me he's going to pull up to a man and say, you're not worth it, and then walk away. Oh, but you would have burst him. What do you mean, man? You like, would have burst him. Obviously, it was a great lesson <laughs> in that sense. Like, don't... It was a good lesson, but you would have bur- But in real him. life, you would have yeah. the magazine it's, on him. It's not, it's not realistic, so I get what you mean. Who, who do you think killed Sully? Who do you think killed Sully? I personally think it was between... It was between, um, I can't remember his name, but the light-skinned guy with the freckles, tall, and then Sully put the, a gun in his mouth and his mouth was bleeding. Or Sai? Sai. It was between Sai or it was the mother of the guy that got deported. Mother of the... Um, Kieran, Kieran's mum. Kieran's mum. Yeah, it's between those two for me. <laughs> but it's like, it's like, no, I can't, now that you laugh, I'm like, you know, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe it's a bit more fetched. It's a, a curious mum, you know. Oh my God, don't kill me. 
Whoa. Maybe maybe it's more likely to be Sai just from your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you, if you, I, obviously I don't know if there was discussions about who they, like, envisioned it to be. I actually don't, I think there but. was, but I actually don't, I actually don't know still. That's, there, you got to remember, I can't lie. There's, there's some things I, I chose not to know. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, just so I don't know. Like, even when I was filming there as well, like, I, there was, I would only really, like, try to read my lines, really. Just so I don't really... I, I didn't want. I didn't want to ruin it for me yeah. when I watch it because I still love the show and I want to watch it for what it is. Like, I still want to be able to watch it and be caught off guard. Yeah. Even though I'm in it, it may sound funny, but yeah. I've just realised I forgot that you got killed before even re they even reached it to the last season. Treacherous. Yeah, that's crazy. How could they do Kit like that, man? And this is he didn't deserve saying, to like, go it, out like it that. Didn't, it didn't make no sense as well. Like me, I'm a very reasonable person. If it, if it did make sense, I'll say it made sense. But it did not make it no make... sense. Like, the man's just got to really bear in mind, I had the option to go and stay with my cousin in Cardiff. And then you're going to tell me that my boy is going to listen to a op and kill his boy like that. I know. I'm putting Without the even thinking, on... He didn't even have no conversation just with me. Straight. <laughs> just blah. Nah, man. That would have happened, happened like that. Oh no. Yeah, that was deep. Ooh, that that was deep. How did you feel when you got when you found out your character's getting deaded off? Um, I heard that it was your agent who called you and said that. Yeah, she she called me and told me, but Demlo Demlo was actually meant to call me and tell me though, mm. um, the producers, but I don't know if they I don't know if they were scared of what I was gonna say or I don't I don't know. Or I don't yeah, know because yeah, yeah. I was actually in hospital at the time. I don't know if they even oh, felt like they okay. might apply some pressure to me in there. So I don't know. Maybe they, they, they didn't want to be the one to drop the news to me in it. That's how yeah, I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I, was, I was a bit pissed off, but I was just thinking, right, here's what it is. At the end of the day, kids going out a real dog anyway, so. Exactly. So through Top Boy, I think one of the best things nowadays about having a platform is you can cross into so many avenues. Mm -hmm. One being fashion. I see you with Naomi Campbell. Big, big How Naomi, is that meeting you know? Naomi? <laughs> big, big Naomi. What's she like in know? person? I feel like she's just really I, tall. No, nah, she's amazing still. She's a, I, I really had to be on point when man saw her, blah, blah. blah. I swear down, blah, blah. <laughs> I didn't want no. I didn't want her to be upset. I didn't want her to be mad. I just wanted her to be cool and remember that I was cool. <laughs> That's it. Like, I even got, yeah. I even heard videos as well when I posted when I must have said something to her and people are saying Ra, what was he what was he whispering in Naomi's <laughs> ear I was like no I wasn't even whispering that I'm mad in her ear the maddest thing is all I asked her was oh can I put my arm behind your back for the picture she said oh yeah that's fine that was it that was it yeah that was it yeah and a lot of the time these environments are so fast paced you ain't really got time to say much literally it's just take the picture and then take the picture next, and move. yeah exactly talking about transitions now so started off as an actor, but music's always been something that you've been true to you and something that you've always wanted to do, but might not have had the confidence, if I can put yeah. it like that, to, to go into it. You actually posted a voice note on, on Instagram. You described it as jumping into a pool that's too cold. What do you mm. mean by that? I, I felt like I was just very hesitant. Mm -hmm. I had, and it was the doubts that made me feel like that really and truly. I felt like I had a lot of those moments like, yeah, yeah, now's the time. Actually, no, 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 wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait. Ah, let's go now. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's been, a, there's been a lot of those, a lot of those moments and I, and, and there was no, I'll be real, there was, there was no need for it. Mm. It was legit me as a person being in my head, how I am in it. Because I, I did have, I did have my peoples around me that was very supportive and they ain't going to make me push out stupidness do you know what I'm saying or you have a good team yeah man so yeah. they, they they believed the man and they were showing me like no bro do it bro do the do the music thing bro we 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 waiting on like what are you doing so what was he waiting on now in hindsight um since Clarity. 
I, I felt like I was still in a in a laboratory. You know what I'm saying? I felt I was still experimenting. And 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 even where I felt like I was experimenting, people felt like I was ready though. That's what felt weird to me. People are telling me I'm ready, but I feel like I ain't. And I'm someone who I I I don't I don't really I don't really trust. <clears throat> I trust my closest, but I don't really give trust out like that. So for me to get out of my head and trust your judgment on what you're saying is like that. That's what was very hard for me to to get my head around, like to trust someone's judgment on something. There's been so many times I've trusted, I tried to trust judgment and I end up saying I shouldn't have done that. You as an actor, what's the difference in terms of how you feel when you're, <coughs> like, because it, it seems like it was easier for you to go down that venture. It's like, it's like there's two me's in it. Like the acting, I'll say the acting was a, it's something I wanted to keep clean. I wanted my image to be clean. I wanted, I just wanted to, to something professional. I didn't want it to be looked at in any other way or because that's your background or whatever. Mm -hmm. But with music here, that's me, me. That's Kadeem. Yeah. But remember, when I'm acting, I'm playing other people. Yeah, I'm, you're playing I'm, Kit. Octo I'm playing Man, Kit, I'm not... playing Samson, I'm playing yeah. this, I'm this. Yeah, yeah. I ain't Kadeem though. It's just that people don't know Kadeem in it. So it's right. just that I feel like, oh, if there's a way people's gonna know Kadeem's gonna be through my music. That's how I express, I really express myself. And do you think that's another reason why it was harder for you to make that step into music? Because it's like showing the true you and given that you're a private person. I'll probably say, yeah. Yeah. I'll say. I think we don't often see that transition from actor to rapper. We see rapper to actor. Definitely, especially recently. But actor to rapper, I think it's a bit harder in my opinion. I think one one example I could, off the top of my head, Drake. When he, I remember when he first um, started rapping, he's just, he's been known for Degrassi, the character in Degrassi, mm -hmm. and then drops a few mixtapes, people weren't taking it serious. Well, this is one thing though, like obviously everyone's gonna have their opinion, but one thing people need to understand is Good music is undeniable to the air. Rather, if the music's good, the music's good. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think your roles have also been connected to music. You know, Top Boy is heavily connected to music. Who did you grow up listening to? When it comes I'll to be rap. Real, like, you know, when it comes to UK, I've never been like, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, there was a few people I was listening to. Like, obviously, I was listening to, right, I was born probably Crept on Conan and. Mm. Uh, what Sneak Bow and do you know what I'm saying the odd ads in Shallow and Blade Brown and do you know what yeah, I'm saying yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like that's 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 what yeah and and you, where you're from is like grime like <laughs> East London grime like hands in hands it's just such a crucial area for UK music so yeah. do you think that influenced your perception of music or yeah no, your definitely, sounds definitely, even definitely, definitely actually Therefore, I, when I was in year seven as well, I thought I thought I, I was gonna do the grime thing. I had grime bars. I can't even remember them <laughs> though, but I had I had grime bars there in year seven though. Cause I thought man, I was gonna do the grime thing at one point. Like them times, yeah, Wiley and yeah, Roll Deep and Chip. I've got a quick this or that for you, yeah. So obviously around the theme of acting versus rapping, I just want you to tell me which one you prefer. So I'll name I'll name the names and you tell me which one you prefer them as. Ashley mm. Walters, actor or rapper. Actor. Kano, actor or rapper? Rapper. Hmm. Why? It's one that's up there. Like, why? Because the reason why I ask why is because he's someone who's got impact in both areas. So, like, why did you pick rapper for Kano? Only reason why is, I mean, he's... He's a sick He's kind of only just started as well, though, you know what I'm saying? True. And and I feel like obviously the what we've seen from him is just it's, we've only seen one side, so I don't that know. Part. I feel like it's just too early for me to call that in it. Yeah. But I do know Kano in it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? P's and Q's. So yeah. That's Favorite Kano album or project? 
I actually can't remember the names, bro. Home Sweet Home. The one, the one that P's and Q's is on, that one. I think it's Home Sweet Home, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah. Little Sims actor, rapper. Uh, rapper. <laughs> Idris Elba, actor, MC, slash DJ. Why are you so <laughs> <laughs> No, because... Every, obviously, no, credit to Idris Elba though, because he's obviously uh, known for is, acting, but bro, he's is an cold. MC and you he's a DJ. Him, he's cold. Bro. Idris is cold, man. He's cold. Idris is cold. But no, I, do, doing his thing. I do prefer I do prefer Idris as an actor though. Yeah. I do prefer him as an actor though. Fifty cent actor slash director or rapper. <laughs> Ooh. No, not well, keep keep him keep him in the in the in the movies, innit? Wait, what? 50, 50. 50. Nah, man, fifty. It's not the same fifth though. The rap. I have no, to. no, no. The rapping fifth today. It's not the same fifth we had before. So that's the reason why I'm going for. No, but I don't mind because you can't add, you can't take away someone's work. No, I'm only taking it away. He's just in a different space though. It don't matter because get with your dance trying is classic, and I forever, I will forever play that. He, he he's the most successful in the whole transitioning thing. Facts. Mm-hmm. Right now. Facts. Uh, yeah. I can't sleep with I can't sleep on him as a rapper. I'm sorry. I hate him. But I hate you're him. you're saying actor slash director. I'm not sleeping on him as a rapper. But I'm gonna say I'm it. gonna say I'm gonna say the act the director way though because he does know what he's doing in it. Yeah. He does know what he's doing still. Yeah, yeah. Last one, Kadeem Ramsey, actor or rapper. <laughs> rapper. Per. Okay. <laughs> so I just got a few more questions about you. Mm. And your sound. So, how would you describe your sound? Three words. Smooth, unique, and special. When you make music and you jump in the studio, you've just started. I don't know how many how how many studio sessions have you had up until this point. Has it been like mainly freestyles? Have you got songs been, in the bank? I've been, I've been, I've been guys studio. I've got okay. songs already. I've, you know, it is yeah. Let me tell you what I've been through. Right, <laughs> I I was recording music, and I'll get to this point where it's like. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's shoot a music video for, video for this. It's happened. I've shot. I've shot probably like what, two, three music videos, and just did not end up dropping because I didn't end up liking it in the mm. end. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it all comes back to me again. Like, but as this, as a creative, you're gonna be your own biggest critic. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's one of them ones. Like, when the when the time's right, you you'll kind of know you'll feel in your gut anyway. But I just don't feel like those ones were. Yeah. The right ones. Yeah. What can you see yourself doing with the music avenue? Let's say maybe two, two, three years from now and you're consistent with it. What can you see yourself doing with it? I don't know. I actually don't know. I just, I just, I just, all I really want, to be honest, is just to resonate with people. Oh, people can resonate with me. Is acting done for now? Mm-mm. There's even a project I'm in that's coming out, I think, March. Mm. It's called The Adventures of Dick Turpin. The Adventures of... of Dick Turpin. Dick Turpin. Yeah, starring mm-hmm. Noel Fielding, um, Ellie White, Dolly Wells, Hugh Bonneville. Yeah, so it's a big cast, still a big cast. Mm. And that's, that's coming out on Apple TV. Okay. Yeah. But this is what I'm saying, like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Movies, yeah. music. I'm trying to do both. You're gonna. You, you, you probably heard me on the radio and not even noticed in the voiceovers. Like I'm just trying to be everywhere. Last question. This is something I want to ask everyone. Like everyone who sits here. And I think it's. I think. It, I don't know if you remember at the beginning. I said, "What's the lesson that you learned early on that shaped who you are today?" Mm-hmm. So, what's something that you've learned now, having been through what you've been through, that you wish you knew before you started doing what you're doing? Um. Hmm. Um. I had to. I had to kind of read people more, because it's something that I had to go through to understand people's traits and. Do you know what I'm saying? I just wish it was something I already had. I can see what you're like before having to go through something with you to know. Do you know what I mean? I just wish I knew things like that from the get-go, how people were from the get-go before having to know they're like that. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a mad question. <laughs> I don't know. And it's, it's a hard question because if you didn't 
if you knew what you knew now, you probably won't be where you are, if that makes sense. Because the mistakes that you made or the choices that you made to get you where you are is has made you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's the point that. of going through stuff that. and making mistakes. Everything's meant to be, so it's, it is a tricky question, but mm-hmm. it's an important question, I think, still. Well, you heard it here first. It's your girl C with... Katsu Zimmy. Per. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. That's it. <laughs> That's work, it. Work. In fact, one thing that I feel like I need to ask you, yeah, because you've made a conscious choice to put your name with Kads instead of Kadeem Ramsey when you're rapping. So can you talk to me about why your name is Kads? It's literally just, just that's what people like just call me still. Yeah. Like Kads is legit just what everyone just calls me. Like even my auntie, like every, no, my family, everyone calls me Kads. Yeah. If it's not Dipsy, it's Kads. Anything you want to plug quickly before we go? Yeah, man, make sure you go check out that eighth floor. Yeah, dropped on the seventh, fire. Go and look on YouTube. On the Spotify, Apple Music, everything is dead there. Yeah, run that up. Yeah, got some more fire coming as well, though. But when's the next single dropping? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna get a little exclusive, but then. Uh, I, I, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. When you see, you see. <laughs> cool.